Good day everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day and today we're going to be talking about the almighty tuba. We went from the trumpet to the tuba. Um, okay, so it's going to be a very short video by the way because there's not all that much I need to, that needs to be said about the tuba. That being said, the tuba plays in the bass and contrabass registers and is part of the brass family. It is usually played in orchestral context, however, ensemble music and for the music for the tuba also exists. And before we get ahead of ourselves, First, we're going to break down the tuba's anatomy, then we're going to break down how the tuba creates sound, and then we're going to break down the tuba's position and all the orchestra and everything. Alright, so first, let's look at its anatomy. So I'm not going to give like, full low of its anatomy because that would take like 20 minutes for all the complicated tubing you can see happening here, but I'll give a basic understanding of what the anatomy of the tuba is. Okay, first, you can see, but, uh, and also bears mentioning, there's a couple of different types of tubas, right? It depends. Sometimes the tuba is structured like this, where you have these four circular valves. Sometimes you have a tuba which has, like the trumpet, just three or four valves which are, you know, pressed down like the trumpet. Which we just have it on somewhere around here. Both are technically still called the tuba. But regardless, I'll, I'll be using this one for my demonstration today. However, the other one also exists and functions quite similar. Quite, quite a similar fashion. Okay, anyways. So up here, first part is the mouthpiece. Now, I have a trumpet's mouthpiece to demonstrate. Of course, the tuba's mouthpiece, as you can see, is much, much bigger. It is much, bigger. It's, the diameter is much larger, but it is the concept is the same, and that's exactly where you place your mouth. So you all go on the mouthpiece, and you play, um, and you make sound to the tuba by buzzing your lips like this. It may not be very attractive at first. That while that may not be very attractive at first, when you put this in the mouthpiece. It's still not very attractive, but it sounds better and it has a slightly more character. And when that sound, that <coughs> sound resonates through the mouthpiece and through the tuba, you get the tuba sound. But that's not relevant. Point is that when you put the mouthpiece on your mouth, that's what it's, it's, it's a detachable piece which is about there, and so you place your mouth. So that's the mouthpiece. It's responsible for carrying that <coughs> sound throughout the entire instrument. Okay, then you go down and then we come to the valves. I'm going to skip the tubing because it's going to take too long. Um, the valves are just when well, you press down those, in this case it's keys, circuit keys. As I said, some tubers have trumpet like valves, those are very low baritones. But so some tubers have trumpet like valves, you press down like this, as I said, three of them. Um, this one has keys, regardless, with the, whichever version you're using. And those are to manipulate the pitch to make higher and lower notes. Great. Then you have all of this tubing. And you go here, and then you come to the main tube, and here we have the bell. So this, where it comes out like this, is called the bell. That is, the sound comes out through the bell like that. That was going to come out through the bell. Okay, so that's a very, very basic anatomy of the tube one, right? Now let's get into talking a little bit more about um, how the tube appears sound, and with that we'll address why all this piping is necessary. Don't worry, so I'm not going to leave you in the dark completely. So as I said, the, the sound of a tuba comes from buzzing your lips. And when that resonates, that, that sound resonates through the mouthpiece, through all the piping that's present in a tuba, you get the titular tuba sound. That I've already demonstrated how this works in my um, uh, friends on and trumpet video, so feel free to watch those if you want to actually see me first buzz my lips, then put it in the mouthpiece, then put it in the instrument to see how that changes. Um, but it's quite a similar thing for the tuba and once again that, that bass sound is just resonating inside all this tubing It's just resonating inside all this tubing, right? That very same sound is resonating inside all this tubing and that's just creating the tuba sound Okay, now let's continue Then we come to the valves. Now how does the tuba make all these different notes? What do the valves do? Well, and I've said this for literally every wind video, every wind instrument video but just in case you haven't seen the others, all wind instruments work on a very, very simple principle. If you make, if you force air to go through a small tube, a small a length, a distance, it's going to produce a high sound. And if you make air go through a long distance, it's going to produce a, a, a lower sound. A short distance, high sound, long distance, lower sound. Right? Short distance, high sound, long distance, lower sound. Okay, that's how it works. And what you're doing with the valves here is that so normally when you don't press any valves, right? Um, it, the, it, it skips all the tubing. The air goes from here through there, then down from here and comes out 
comes out at the end. Okay, it skips all this complicated tubing here. But when you press a valve, you f there's a piece of tubing associated with that valve. And what that does is it forces the air to go through some amount of extra space, some amount of extra distance. And when the air is forced to travel that extra distance, it lowers the sound a bit. And this one will, has another one associated with it, and that's going to lower the sound even more, and so on and so forth. So by collectively having all these valves lower the sound, that's how you are able to get all the pitches. So long story short, by, by pressing these different ones, you can create all the different pitches. C, D, F, F sharp, whatever you want to see. Okay, so that's how the tuba makes sound. That's the anatomy of the tuba. Let's move on to its position and overall tone and everything. Now the tuba is very similar to the double bass. It's literally what the, the tuba is to the brass section, where the double bass is to the string section. It's got a very low, it's played on the bass and contributes registers. That means it plays low and very, very, it plays very low and extremely low. Very, very low. Okay? I don't really need to go much further into what that means. That, great. Um, so, and in addition to being low, it has a very, it has a booming sound. It's gravelly, it's deep, it's booming, and that's very simple to double bass. The, the tuba has it even more. Such a strong, it's like, it's a, it's, it's overpowering, right? That's why on orchestra we'll have at maximum two tubas, uh, usually one tuba, right? You, and I've not seen orchestra which has more than two. Most have one, most have one, right? And it's got such a very deep overpowering sound, okay? The very gravelly, very, oh, that sound. Very difficult to describe tone with words, but yeah, that's the right sound that the tuba has. And it plays into the registers. So now we come to its position in the orchestra, what's it doing in the orchestra, and then we come to its position in, you know, maybe ensembles and then solo. Okay, in the orchestra, the tuba is the lowermost, the lowermost part of the um, brass section and, and it functions quite a bit the same as the double bass functions for the string section. The double bass is not really adding the lower ha harmonies but lay laying a harmonic, rhythmic and melodic bass. It's giving a foundation and the lower harmonies are by the same. So it's giving a foundation. Same way here, the tuba is giving a foundation. It gives a foundation and harmonies for the brass section, gives it power and allows and sort of creates a very, it's it giving the foundation. And it, creates, it helps create that grand whole sound that you hear when you're an orchestra. It's helped by tuba. But a lot of orchestras, in fact, don't even have a tuba. Very few composers write for tuba and orchestra. But when you do want that very, when you very, very, very hear a very overpowering sound, it's probably coming from the tuba. And it helps once again lay a foundation upon which all the melody and harmony can cre be created. So, as I said, it's very similar in, in role to a double bass. In a lot of ways, it's very similar to a double bass. Anyway, so that's its role in the orchestra. Uh, occasionally, you'll have a tuba play a melody in orchestra. This is even more. Uh, tuba is a very seen in orchestra, so as you can see, it's even more rare to have a tuba play um, melody. But it is not a, it's not a, it's not a impossibility. You see, tuba play melodies every now and then, and that means the rest of the orchestra is silent or supporting the tuba, and the tuba is playing the main melody or is play, uh, playing it along with other instruments. But tuba usually has supporting and more foundational role in music, not really, uh, in the orchestra, not really, um, you know, frontline melodic role. Not really in the folk art very often. Okay, that's orchestral music out of the way. Now we can talk about ensemble music. And we're going to talk about ensemble music. In fact, tubas, just like other pieces, aren't used in much of a much wrong. Um, because once again, they have a very gravelly overpowering sound. So you need many other instruments to compensate for that. Um, so that's why, you know, a string quartet doesn't have a double bass because double bass is too strong. I don't, I don't think many brass ensembles include tuba for the same reason. I think they include baritones, which are like tubas, but a bit higher, right? So tubas, but a bit higher, right? Those kind of instruments, I'm pretty sure they include that. If you want to count that as a tuba, go ahead, do so, right? Um, there's no, there's no problem doing that, euphoniums, but the honest to goodness tuba is very rarely seen. Because once again, the overpowering sound completely overpowers whatever the other instruments were trying to do in a chamber, on chamber, you know, five, six instruments. So you don't see all that often. Okay, moving on. Uh, solo is also very seldom seen. Solo, of course, for solo music exists for all instruments. I don't really need to you know, emphasize that it exists for all instruments, but in very small quantities for our friend the tuba here. You don't find all that much solo music for the tuba. It exists, but not all that much. Same for the trombone, or same for the viola. Not that much solo music exists. It exists, but not that much. That's really all there is to it. And with that, I really covered all that I really want to cover about the tuba. Um, that's really all I wanted to cover about the tuba, yeah. Regardless, that being said, thank you so much for listening so far. Hopefully you learned something. 
hopefully you walked away with more knowledge than you came in with and you enjoyed it to some extent. That being said, um, this is me wishing you a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.